uh, a, a wash, the time and material costs as a wash. Other well drillers will, will base it on a linear foot cost. And so in that case, a shallow well may actually cost less uh, than, a, than a deep well. So a lot of it depends on, on uh, the individual drillers and, and how they, they, they cost out their, their construction. But uh, you know, more basically in this, in this graphic, again, it's, it's a cross-section view. And on the, on the uh, far left, uh, you see the word shallow pumped well, and, and there's, there's two, two different types of wells. And, and it, as you can see, uh, they're in the, the, the top aquifer. The, the, and the, in this case, this would be the Columbia, or su surficial aquifer. And on this uh, figure, it's called an unconfined aquifer. And that's because it doesn't have a clay confining bed above it. Uh, so that, that would be a shallow pumped well. And as you can see also on this graphic, uh, the, the, the age of the water that goes into this pumped well is on the order of days to years. And as I showed on the previous diagram, uh, the Columbia is less than uh, 300 years old. Uh, and in many cases, uh, it's uh, less than 50 years old. So a deep pump well, is going to be from a confining, a confined aquifer. And, and in this case, the top confined aquifer uh, would be the upper Yorktown. Uh, and then the next one down uh, would be the middle Yorktown. And uh, uh, the, the, the time it takes for the water to get to the well, in this case, as I also previously described, would be, would be on the order of centuries. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and, and this goes back to the question of the difference in, in water quality. Uh, and in general, both types of wells can provide uh, safe and reliable water, uh, but there's a number of different di differences between these wells on the shore. And there's also, as, as uh, John can speak to, uh, there's some very different construction requirements for the wells uh, on the shore. Uh, but, you know, while each well will be different in general, it is more likely that for the shallower wells, the yield will be, the yield, the amount of water, the amount of gallons per minute you can get from the well, uh, will generally be more limited. And that is in part because uh, it is shallower you have less water column uh, that you're pulling the water from. And then there's a number of other hydraulic factors that are beyond the scope of this discussion uh, that have to do with it being unconfined versus confined that also uh, uh, has the, the result of, of somewhat limiting the yield. But in almost all cases, uh, the yield from these shallow wells is sufficient for uh, an individual household well, okay? And so uh, throughout most of the shore, uh, the shallow aquifer, the, the superficial aquifer will provide sufficient water to supply an individual household. Uh, overall, uh, the, the most common problems with the shallow, the most common water quality problems with shallow wells are iron and nitrate. Uh, there, there may be uh, some instances and, and, and based on water quality information we've collected, we don't see this. So uh, it's uncommon where if a well is located too close to a, a uh, septic field that is not maintained properly, you might see some uh, effects from that septic field and, and John will talk to this later. Um, and, and this also is the importance of maintaining, constructing and maintaining your septic system properly. Or if it's uh, you know, close to uh, areas where somebody's been improperly managing uh, uh, you know, their uh, uh, both uh, commercial, industrial or, or household materials and dumping it directly on the ground. 
but in general, iron and nitrate uh, are the primary issues you, you find with the shallow wells. For the deep wells, uh, yield is generally not an issue, uh, but salt water uh, and specifically high sodium uh, is not uncommon. Uh, and it's also not uncommon for the water to be hard uh, with scaling. Uh, it's also uh, high iron uh, is also not uncommon for these deep wells also. And so quite often uh, you'll need to treat for iron, whether it's shallow or deep. Great. While well, you're basically focusing on uh, uh, wells for homes, what about the uh, municipal wells that we have for Cape Charles, for Onancock, for Shinkati, yep. uh, et cetera? Where, where do they, they don't use the shallow or Columbia Aquifer, do they for their water source? Uh, the, most of them, most of them do not accept, uh, except Chincote does use uh, the Columbia. Uh, and, and in fact, with, with, with the exception of, uh, and, and an issue again, this is outside the, the scope of this discussion, uh, with the exception of an issue with uh, some, some PFOS, which many folks may have seen in the news recently. Uh, and, and PFOS is, is basically, uh, is, is most commonly associated with the Teflon cookware coating that, that most people see. But in this case, it, it was used in firefighting foam by, by NASA. And, and you know, some, some PFOS was seen in some of the, the, the shallow wells. And that's uh, at, at Chincoteague, and that's, that's treated. That's been, that's been directly treated. But, but overall, the quality of the shallow wells uh, at Chincoteague is, is very good. And, and in fact, uh, they were originally installed because the iron levels in some of the deeper wells was much higher. And so they installed them uh, because the iron actually was lower in these shallower wells than, than the deep wells. Uh, I'd also like to note uh, on many of these slides, I, I have uh, web links to uh, ad additional sources of information. These aren't the only sources of information on the web, but these are some that I, I thought were, were more useful. And in this case, uh, information on treatment systems. And this is a, a, a CDC website that uh, provides some more information on different uh, groundwater treatment systems. And this is a graphic that shows uh, a, a number of different uh, treatment systems. And, and you know, folks who, who have well water, many of them do treat their water with at least a water softener and many times to remove iron. Uh, and so some of these canisters may look familiar to you. In a continuation of the same uh, uh, question, uh, I'd also like to note the shallow wells and deep wells have both different location and construction requirements. You know, because they're because they are shallow, uh, they they have different setback requirements from certain things than than the deep wells, and also the deep wells in order to prevent water from the shallow mingling in with the deeper water, they have different construction requirements also. And uh, th those requirements can be found uh, in the private, uh, in the VDH private well regulations uh, cited here. The specific requirements are found in sections 360 through 410. Uh, it's actually an easier read than, than you might find in many regulations. And so if, if there's anyone that, that wants to see what's required uh, for the different types of wells, uh, this is readily accessible. And John, I don't know if you have anything you'd like to add to this. Uh, not really, Brick, you covered it pretty well. I mean, like, like you said, the, there's definitely different requirements for drilling deep versus shallow. And the, the siting is, is one, you definitely, the, the further, 
the shallower the well, the, the further the setback might be from any potential source of contamination. And then, like you said, the grouting of the well, um, those requirements are different as you go deeper, just to prevent that co-mingling with the aquifers. And the, the, the setback the setback distances are, are really to protect the quality of the water in, in, that, in that well. Uh, and and so it's it's not that it's not that you can't protect the well. Uh, you know these these requirements are set there. So so it it has you have the ability to to have safe and reliable water. Rick, before we leave the the, the well subject, um, we have a a, a unique. Uh, uh, town called Tangier and that sits out in the middle of the bay. Yes. And so I would imagine that uh, there's not a lot of uh, uh, shallow wells out there. I may be wrong, but what is the municipal, so how deep is that well out there? Uh, the, it, it, it is deep uh, and, 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 and the water quality is not very good. Uh, uh, the, it's salty. The water, the water is uh, generally salty. Uh, I know, I know. At times, water has been been brought in uh, to to Tangier uh, as as well. Uh, but b basically, the, the the general water, the quality of that water, uh, would normally be be uh, treated with something like a reverse osmosis system or some other desalting mm -hmm. system. And I don't know if uh, anything to add. In individuals, I think, with heart problems and danger are actually told not to drink the water. They have to yep. drink bottled water because of the amount of salt that's in it. Yep. Yes, and I think the wells there are something on the order of 600 feet deep or more. Um, and also, I guess I'll say this because there's been some discussion about municipal wells in this particular question. Uh, the VDH Office of Drinking Water actually posts uh, sampling results online now, so anybody can look them up for any public water systems. As some systems are sampled twice a year, some are done quarterly, some are done monthly, or, or even more frequently for large water systems. But all of that information is available to the public online with a few clicks on the internet. Good job. 